I'm very happy that you uh, that you are here and that we can discuss your book. And I'm very happy uh, that um, you wrote this book. You know, it was an eye opener for me, and I I'm constantly having this somewhere around me because I get always some new ideas. So thank you for coming. Well, thank you for the invitation, Walter. Yes, it's uh, uh, yeah. I, I'm glad to hear that you enjoy the book. And some people say that it is a lot of pages. It's it's almost 700. And I always advise, well, just do uh, 100 pages in, in a day. And then in six days, you run through the books. And then the seventh day, <laughs> you can take a rest. And uh, this is the program that uh, was used also uh, thousands of years ago by somebody called God. So it, it seems to be an appropriate uh, schedule. <laughs> I see, I see. You're following in big footsteps, I see. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, Julian, um, I'd like to ask you, what was your motivation or your set of motivations to write that book? Um, well, the, 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 the real motivation is that I, st I started with Reiki in 1994. Mm -hmm. And um, during the first uh, day part of my Reiki 1 class, within 10 minutes or something like that, uh, I was just observing what my Reiki master was doing and telling. And I had a feeling that I was struck by a light or something like that. And I realized right at that moment that I was looking um, at my own future profession. profession. Yeah. And in those days, I thought it was a pr profession Reiki master. Um, but I think that the more appropriate word is uh, vocation. Yes. It was just a calling. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I, I recognized it. And right from that moment, I knew I will become a Reiki master. Mm -hmm. And it was just a matter of time. And in those days, it was, um, uh, it was common that you had to wait for three months between Reiki 1 and Reiki 2. So I waited for three months. And that it was uh, common to wait for three years before you became a Reiki master. So I waited for three years. So after two years, I uh, solicited to become a Reiki master candidate. And after three years, uh, I almost counted the days um, <laughs> until I was three years. And so I, I took it rather, uh, rather literally. And then I became a Reiki master. And that is how it went. And mm -hmm. uh, over time, I had what I call special experiences. And you can call it spiritual experiences or mystical experience, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's call it special experiences. And um, that made me wonder, what on earth am I practicing? Mm -hmm. And so I, st I started my own, my own, my own, uh, my journey. Yeah, I started my own journey in, 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 in research and study on Reiki. Mm -hmm. And uh, first of all, people said, well, it's a, it's a spiritual practice. So I asked my colleagues, a colleagues, uh, Reiki masters in those days, okay, spirituality, what is spirituality? And I, when I asked this to uh, 10 colleagues, I got 20 different answers. So I thought, this is not going to bring me somewhere. <laughs> so this went on and on for some years. And um, uh, I thought I have to... I have to do a study of, of any kind. And uh, in, the, in the 1980s, I did uh, a master's study in computer science. So I was familiar with the academic world, so to speak. And, um, and before that, I did two years of psychology, but I sw switched from psychology to, in, to computer science. So, so I was also a little bit familiar with the soft sciences, so to speak. And, um, and then I found out in 2007 already that, um, that there was uh, in the Netherlands at the Radboud University, there was a study spirituality, inter-religious oh. spirituality to be wow. precise. And I thought, this is it. I, that's where I have to go to. And uh, so I came to the university and the first thing I said to, my, to the professors, I said, well, I'm here because I want to write write uh, a master's thesis on uh, mystical experiences of Reiki masters. And they said, sure, we will see. <laughs> and um, the reason why they were so, yeah, so caught, so yes, a little bit hesitating is that in universities in general, I think, um, 
when somebody comes to a university and says, well, I'm practicing uh, practice uh, X, Y, Z, and mm-hmm. I want to do a master thesis on it, they mm-hmm. are afraid that those people want to have a scientific uh, stamp on their spiritual practice yeah. and that they have already a bias that they cannot overcome. Yes. And that is why in 2007 they were very cautious. But mm. uh, over time they uh, started to learn me and realized that I was really, um, that I could really be that unbiased to the point that that even if I would find out that Reiki would be completely woo-woo and um, that I would put it on paper and, and would be willing to leave it and mm-hmm. go to another spirituality, mm-hmm. for instance. And that is that is the the point of view that you must have as a as a as a as a, as a schooler that you that you try to avoid any form of bias. Yes. And later on, with my supervisor, we gave it the words "stepping in" and "stepping out." Mm-hmm. That means that uh, stepping in is that as a Reiki master, I can give a Reiki class and do not discuss the teachings. I right. just give a Reiki class. Yeah. But stepping out, as a schooler, I can say, "What on earth am I, t- am I saying? What, mm-hmm. what, what is it? What I, what I try to transmit?" So that, and that is something else. Uh, so these are two points of view, mm-hmm. and they can they can live alongside. Mm-hmm. And there was one professor in uh, Christianity mm-hmm. who uh, gave us at some point uh, a class where he explained that, uh, or where he was teaching from a book. Uh, of a theologian who said God is dead (laughs) well he himself was still a practicing Roman Catholic so we as students ask him how how do you do that how can you as a as a school as a professor uh, uh, give a lecture on God is dead and while as a practitioner you're you're still you're you're still practicing Christianity and he explained that um, um, that even he himself uh, didn't uh, doesn't believe in God, he still thinks that praying is useful. It mm-hmm. has a function, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it gives also comfort. Mm-hmm. And so he he embodied uh, uh, practicing something and scholarship. So he was a, he was a teacher for me in this moment. So right. I, he he showed me it is possible. Mm-hmm. And even without an internal conflict, and that is, of course, that is, of course, that was, of course, the the lesson that he gave us. So um, uh, I wrote a master thesis on uh, mystical experiences of Reiki masters, mm-hmm. um, um, and um, and it was later on published in English in in the magazine. Is this the available book. publicly? This uh, thesis? Yes. Ah, you great. can find it. On, you can find it on my on my website. Okay. and mm-hmm. then in the tab publications and then you can find it and download it yoyan.nl yoyan.nl very right. easy website name yeah <laughs> and um uh, so um that was 2010 and at that moment the professors asked me well you were do- you you did a great job and we would like to see you to continue with study on reiki uh, and but this time as an uh, external PhD student, and I, mm-hmm. I call it external because I am already at an age of uh, 60 plus now, so they they could not offer me a job, and mm-hmm. and that is an internal PhD student. But there are also half of the PhD in the Netherlands are done by external PhD students, people who are already uh, retired and think, and now I have the time, and now I have the motivation and the focus to finally do a PhD. Wonderful um, idea. Yeah, and the, so you have the full support of the university, mm-hmm. and um, um, with with everything that you need, uh, except that you are not paid for it, mm-hmm. and uh, so that is the construction in the Netherlands. So I started in 2011, and then the process is, okay, you want to do a, a doctoral thesis. Uh, first of all, what is the gap in knowledge that you want to fill? Mm-hmm. Because you don't, you must not write about something that that is already uh, written about. It has to be something new. Yeah. So the question is, uh, because I was interested in spirituality, well, okay, I want to know 
what happened with the spirituality of Reiki during its migration from Japan to the United States, to the US mainland, and during its globalization all over the world. Mm -hmm. Great idea. But what is, how do you describe, uh, how do you analyze spirituality and describe spirituality in such a way that you indeed can follow it from um, from from Japan to the West might be tricky, yeah. and it might be tricky, and that is where I think my um, uh, um, yeah my analytical view uh, came at hand that I that I developed during my study of computer science because that came forth out of math, uh, uh, and that is all about models and, and mm -hmm. those kind of things. So I I could I could think in models, and um, there are not there are several uh, models of spirituality that you can find in academic literature yes but it it needed to be it had to be a model that also incorporated culture in some way because culture is um, of great influence on a spirituality always yes and um, so when and when a, a spirituality migrates from the one culture into another culture it will change and that is not even a question that is that is a fact of life so um, the outcome so the assumption was the spirituality of reiki changed but how mm -hmm. and what exactly did change so that is um, um and and that is that is i think the the red line that goes through the whole book and then of course you have to First of all, you have to, so that was the research question. Okay, uh, the spirituality of Reiki uh, changed, but how did it change? Mm -hmm. And then you have to, to reconstruct, as it is, the spirituality of Reiki in mm -hmm. terms of such a model. Mm -hmm. And that is what I did. And I described the spirituality of Reiki in around 60, what I call characteristic elements. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were. They, it was about the culture. It was about the self. That was also very important because the notion of self in Asia is different from the self in the West. Oh yeah. It, right. had, uh, it had to do with the zeitgeist. Uh, mm -hmm. From uh, Japan today is different from Japan uh, from pre war uh, from the 1920s, and, um, and and thus the culture is different, and thus. Uh, the spirituality, how it is constructed, is it could be different. Uh, it has to do with um, with uh, f fundamental influences and inspiration of mm -hmm. the practitioner as well as of Usui. What inspired him to create Reiki, and what inspired us to practice Reiki nowadays? Mm -hmm. So that's also a component. And then it comes to okay, what do we do? What are the spiritual exercises that are uh, offered? by Osui and in what way did they change and uh, develop into Western notions. Mm -hmm. And then it comes to, okay, and how does the Reiki practitioner, what is his, what is his fundamental attitude toward, towards life? What yeah. is his way of living? That's and how, is, how does Reiki practice or spirituality in general influence a practitioner? Mm. And how did it influence Uzui? How did it influence Hayashi and all his contemporary people? And yeah. how did it influence us? Because to be um, uh, an, an officer of the Imperial Navy in the 1920s uh, is some, in Japan is something different from being uh, Walter Lübeck in Germany or Jojen Jonker in the, the Netherlands in 2020. Mm -hmm. We live in a different world. Mm -hmm. And so what did it do to them and what did it do, does it, does it do to us? And so there, there can be a difference in it. So those are the, the those are the research questions. And then you, st you start. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but of course, within uh, scholarly literature, uh, people continue to write about these things. So in, in, a, in a doctoral study, you're, you're almost shooting at a moving target. Yeah. Because you, you define your question, into, in my case, in 2011, but then it goes on and on and on. And first of all, you have to read, okay, what has been written up until today? And that process will take normally about two years. 
to really yeah. uh, take all take take in all the information that there is and uh, that is why i have such a long uh, uh, bibliography i think that there are over 400 entries of books and articles and whatever it takes time to just to read but meanwhile the new things are also written so you start with your target there and then oh your target is moving and then it is there and so you have to catch up yeah and then you have to go faster than what is written because you have want still want to write to add something to offer something new mm -hmm. something new information this then the pressure is building up you have it's it, it you cannot f free will until the end of days you have to write something and um and that happened so in 2016 and then the book came out and, and that was that and uh so that, that is the, that is in in a, yeah summarize the, the process of how a doctoral study is performed and in the first two year you are supervised by a professor and somebody else and in my case it was a professor who is an an expert on asian religions oh. from india to uh to tibet to uh to, to all wow. those asian countries in china and including japan mm -hmm. and uh my second co supervisor was a specialist in new spiritualities and new age spiritualities wow and so both so the one could assist me and uh in this whole process of uh, studying asian asian spiritualities and the other when i further when i processed in time and i came to the west so to speak because i followed reiki he could give me advice and mm -hmm. then the normal process is that in the first two years they they supervise you then in year three and four you are uh, uh, you are experts on the same level on on a certain topic and you communicate with each other and exchange information and in the last year you are the expert and they they ask you questions from how it is going on mm -hmm. and then at some point they also feel this is it and then it's time to uh to to yeah to to make public your your dissertation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and in the netherlands it is uh, then the case it's, it's slightly different from germany uh, that um, there comes a reading reading committee and then three other professors are invited who also have to review it and one of them was in this case a professor from leiden university who is an expert on japanese culture and japanese spirituality so mm. his voice was very important in this yeah but he also gave gave his green light wow and, and then you have five people who said uh, it's good okay mm. go for it mm. and then there will be then there is a public defense mm -hmm. and in my case then you you have uh, 12 professors or senior senior uh, staff of universities who starts uh, asking all kind of difficult questions and I, oh, oh, oh. I was <laughs> bloody i was i was never as nervous at that moment in time <laughs> i said <I'll> you will <laughs> oh and the, 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 they, they thought that they started with a simple question just to help me to start mm. yeah and it was is reiki um uh, inherent spiritual or is it a spiritual practice that is and i was so nervous that i thought what on earth is he asking <laughs> no idea what he was <laughs> what he was talking about <laughs> so oh. that question i i screwed up totally but le and after the first question okay fuck them all i just do my thing and then i could more relax and that's how it that's how it went and Wow. Um, so that that was that was for me a highlight in my life because it's mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. it's not something that um you write entirely by yourself but it is already deeply reviewed and all those 12 have then uh, read this book from from cover to cover wow. so the, there were questions from yeah but you say on page 240 you say this and on page 512 you say oh. that oh. how do you relate those two things and I, then I think, well, did I really say that on 250 and 240 and 512? So, uh, that's how it goes. They grilled you. In, in but uh, in in a positive way because it's, yes, yes, sure. because they their attitude is if you cannot defend your work at this time, it will be very difficult for you to defend it in the future. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
and, uh, and uh, right they are. And uh, of course, it is it is it is an academic level, so it is not. It has to be accepted by the academic world first of all, and luckily it it was accepted. And yeah, then uh, some for some people they think, okay, now you're done. But my supervisor already said, no, this is the beginning, because now that you have this title of doctor, it it will open doors. It will become more easy to publish things. Mm -hmm. Because you have already proven it, it is it's it's it's, it's almost like a, a test that you really can do some research and then you can go on from there. Um, but but it's all it's all uh, out of passion because it's not a job for me. It's it don't mm -hmm. have to earn money on it. So it's it purely out of compassion, and it is in alignment with my vocation of becoming a Reiki master and and my passion to really deeply understand for my, first of all for myself from this basic question where I started with what on earth am I practicing? <laughs> so it's it's a quite blessed situation I, I guess uh, you are in and you passed on this blessing to the world. Um, would you would you please um, tell a little bit about um, what is what is special for scientific research and scientific work because many people don't know this. When I was um, doing uh, economic studies in Hanover, one of the things I, until today I uh, find very valid is this way of scientific working because it gives you a different mindset. Would you like to elaborate a little bit on that? Um, yeah, I think that um why my work was accepted is that it was the first time that uh, in academic literature mm -hmm. the history no not the history the spirituality of reiki was written from the founder up until today mm -hmm. and that was not yet done there mm -hmm. was a, there's done a lot of study on reiki but it was always either on something during uh, uh, in usui's time or about contemporary reiki but not an overview from mm -hmm. really from the start up until today Mm -hmm. In a way that, in, in a way that every contemporary uh, practitioner may recognize himself in his own practice, yeah. Yeah. and that he that he understands where some deviations come from, and yeah. and why it developed this way or that way, mm -hmm. and um, um, yeah, I think that gives it an answer to your question. Yes, I, I think so. That that helps a lot. Um, would you would you like to tell a little bit about what does Reiki practice Reiki as um, a special ingredient of your life mean to you? Well, for me, it is it has become a way of life. I think, uh -huh. and uh, living the living the preset, but also even more, I think the um, giving myself Reiki on a daily mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. I do that. There's not one day that do not I do not give myself Reiki, not one day. And I am not a dogmatic person that I sit down every day and do every position for five minutes. No, I just lay on the couch and mm -hmm. uh, place my hands wherever I feel that they want to be placed. And either it's my often it's my head when I've done a lot of reading or, or writing or whatever, mm -hmm. or it is on my my heart or on my my stomach. So. I, ju I just do it in a in a in a free formatted way, mm -hmm. but there's never a day that I I forget my I I not even forget. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how not to give myself Reiki during the day. <laughs> I do it when I when I wake up and when I'm still laying in bed I give myself Reiki and I give my partner Reiki. And when I'm uh, watching the, the eight o'clock news uh, on the couch, I give myself Reiki. And when I go go to bed, I give myself Reiki. So it's it goes on during the day. I see. It, it's completely mm. integrated in my life. Mm. And um, just what I said, I, ca I cannot even imagine not to do it. How did so how did Reiki change your life? I mean, you are so much involved with it every day in in many different ways. So what what was changing by that practice uh, i think when i started with reiki i was still a, a consultant for a software house mm -hmm. and um, when you are a consultant of a software house you come in situation where there's always stress 
yeah. because you're you're not uh, hired uh, because everything goes smoothly and and they <laughs> like your 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 brown eyes and uh, they like drinking coffee with you. No, there's always something going on. They, they are all, uh, companies are uh, always in a, in a phase of transition, and uh, when when they need external consultants to to help them, so there's always stress. And what I noticed is that um, I did not, I did not became part of this stress anymore. And it were oh. it were my colleagues that noticed th that even more. And during those first years of my Reiki mastery, when I was Reiki master and consultant, uh, most of my students were my colleagues because they noticed, oh. hey, in daily life, he he, why is he not affected by the stress? <laughs> and while we have stress and he hasn't he hasn't what 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 is he doing could it could it have to do with this reiki because i didn't advocate advocate reiki i didn't mm -hmm. speak about reiki but they just noticed that i was handling stress differently wow. and the daily the, the 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 madness of the day and of course they knew it because when they asked well oh, what did you this this weekend well i went to ikea and i did did and that and i Oh, and, and and I said I gave a Reiki class. Reiki class. Okay, so that's how they knew. Um, so they noticed, and, and because they noticed, I noticed even. Sometimes you need your environment to make you aware that you are changing, <laughs> yes. in a way. Look in the mirror. So, look in the mirror. Yeah. And they were a mirror of me. Mm -hmm. So um, in those days, uh, uh, I gave Reiki class like a project. We start on Saturday morning and on, on, on Sunday afternoon when they left the building, they had Reiki. <laughs> well, what, what, a, what a great start. I think uh, this convinced you so much that you also had the kind of uh, inner, inner drive to write that, that big book. Yeah, because I, I had no, no um, doubts whether mm. Reiki works because it worked for me. And I just wanted to find out well where did it came from and and perhaps why did it work and that is still not answered because that is a very complicated question or is a question with many many facets around yes. it and, and many angles that you can approach this mm -hmm. question mm -hmm. um, but nevertheless um, yeah I was totally convinced about this, this the positive um, the, the positive effect of Reiki because I felt it myself mm -hmm. and and I saw it with with all my with many of my students. Wonderful. So that's how it worked. And maybe one nice story about this is, I've, I was working at somewhere, um, at some place, and um, there was also a help desk for IT problems. Mm -hmm. And there was a lady of the help desk that could never say no. So if somebody came with a question from my, my PC as a crest or 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 whatever or my heart is crashed can you help me she could never say no so she was always a little bit overloaded with oh, work gosh. yeah yeah of course and so she wanted to she wanted to do a reiki class so she did and on monday morning we were at the office again so at 11 o'clock at coffee time i thought well let's ask how she is doing and she was doing fine and she said oh i had such a wonderful reiki class i was so happy and blah blah blah, blah. and at some point another colleague came in and uh, he asked, oh, what was your Reiki class? Yeah, it was fine. Okay, thank you. And by the way, I have a crash, and can you now help me with my PC? And I saw her, I saw something changing in her eyes, and she said, no. <laughs> and everybody was, what is she saying? And she, it was with, with all her inner power, she said, no. <laughs> As if she reached, she drew a line in the sand. Well, this is it. And what she, is that? She she was in she was she, she was in shock of her own response and like anybody else. So there was were people who were saying, "Oh, so that is the effect of Reiki." Thank you very much. I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a very nice example of of to see how a Reiki class already can make a change in in your mindset or in your attitude in your being. From okay, this is it. This is the line. And normally you don't see it with your student because they go away. Yeah. But because it was a colleague, I could, I could observe her uh, right the next day and see firsthand from how it, how it had affected her. And I thought, oh, this is great. 
and this is just an ex this is one example only. Yeah, thank you. That is uh, that is really uh, uh, showing uh, the wonderful effects of uh, of a Reiki training. And um, well, that that brings me to the next question: um, What are in your mind the most important points of the spirituality of Uzui's Reiki? So, according to your own experience. Um. Well, to my own experience, I think that um, the initiation is an is an important part. Mm -hmm. It it con it either opens something or or awakens something or connects something, whatever you want would like to call it or how whatever you ex how you experience it. It uh, it is my feeling that it does something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At least it uh, activated some uh, psychophysiological processes. That at some point it 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 enab it enables you to lay on your hands and mm -hmm. in a different in a way different from before the initiations. Yeah. And for example, that is when I have a Reiki class, I uh, invite my students to lay on their hands mm -hmm. on each other before the initiation, and then I say, now pay attention to what you feel. Mm -hmm. to what exactly what you feel at this moment mm -hmm. then they receive the initiation and then I ask them again mm -hmm. lay on your hands and do you feel the difference do you do you and nine out of ten says i feel a difference i feel something different and that is so that is i think a very important part of the initiation ritual in whatever way performed and however you call it doesn't matter and um and then I think that the the daily practice of yourself is very important. That you constantly remind your 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 wholeness of body, mind, spirit, um, yeah, to 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 stay at this 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 other state of state of mind. I should always state of being. I should perhaps say in, instead of state of mind. Now that is for me a very important aspect. I think. Then I noticed that for um, the Reiki precepts uh, are very helpful, but I also have my. That is for me not the strongest part of Reiki practice. Mm -hmm. Because if you would say if uh, Usui died already after four years, he 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 founded Reiki in 1922, and died in 1926. So a good question is, was he ready with his work? Mm -hmm. Or was he interrupted by his death? That is, mm -hmm. could be a question. And I sometimes wonder if he would have lived longer if he would have, ex uh, 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 if he would have worked out the precepts more in a in a psychological model, or a an, an more enlarged tool for the mind, for the psyche, uh, uh, based on the precepts perhaps. For instance, if you take a look at the first piece, just for today, do not worry, mm -hmm. or the second, and the, mm -hmm. the, the, depending on the order you take, mm -hmm. for, just for today, do not worry. Think, yeah, of, is there any spirituality that stimulates you to worry? There isn't. Nobody <laughs> wants to worry. It's it's of all ages that nobody right. wants to worry. That's, that's right. so. That is there's that is there's no wisdom in that in itself. Mm -hmm. Because nobody wants to worry, um, uh, but it does help, of course, to ask yourself, okay, why am I worrying? To use mm -hmm. it as a mirror. But in that, the Reiki pieces are not unique, of course. Byron Katie also is. What is what is what is the worst thing that can happen to you? That is also to do with worry and and what are you afraid of? And, and so there are more mirrors. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And I think that uh, as we know now that uh, Uzui, as you know, borrowed or based his precepts on the precepts of another guy this Bison Suzuki and mm -hmm. changed one and um, but it doesn't matter of course because we are all inspired by by uh, by other people that that's no that's nothing wrong with that um, but I think that I think that my best guess would be that if he would have lived longer mm -hmm. he would have offered more teachings of course. especially for for the for the for the for the training of the mind so to speak for the perhaps even for the for the kokoro in japanese uh, terms yes of course and uh, i i think um it it might be questionable whether there is a possibility of uniqueness in spirituality 
of course, the view might be unique, but spirituality as such, I don't know. And is there any any school, any spiritual tradition really at a certain time finished, like there is nothing else which can be done or should be done? Well, to, I think that most spiritualities mm -hmm. develop over time. And um, mm -hmm. one of the thing, one of the few that doesn't seem to change much is uh, A Course in Miracles. For instance, that's one book and it, it is untouched and it stays untouched. But what you also see in the Course of Miracle scene is that it has offsprings mm -hmm. and that there are new books that's based on the Course of Miracles. And, uh, and that, is, that is what constantly happy, uh, happens. Yeah, there are books that are based on the Bible or there are books that are based on Reiki. So it, it, it continues and it's, mm -hmm. uh, that, is, that is a fact of life, I think, of every spirituality. And I think that the underlying core is that people are always trying to to find a way uh, to where they can develop from their current situation into mm -hmm. a better one. Yeah, right. That is that is the, the bottom line. Mm -hmm. And whether it is stress for a computer consultant, mm -hmm. or whether it is disease, or whether it is old age, or whether it is loss of your partner or your job or there's, 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 we are we are constantly bombarded with uh, with events, and we uh, how how do we deal with these these yeah. events in our lives, and so and that is why why I say from okay we are people are constantly uh, seeking for a way to to develop from their current situation mm -hmm. into a better situation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. regardless how you define this better situation mm -hmm. that's individual for, i think <laughs> and for the one it can be this and for the other it yeah. can be that and yeah. the path that people uh, choose can also for the one it is reiki and for the other it can be a, a course in miracle because i call cool. and for instance when i when i start a reiki class the mm -hmm. first thing i say to my students whatever i say to you Mm -hmm. Ask yourself if it is true. Mm -hmm. And then the second advice that I gave, whatever I say to you, ask for yourself if it is true for you. Mm -hmm. So I always stimulate them to think for themselves. Wise words. And to, 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 I stimulate them to make their own decisions and to find out for themselves if Reiki is a possible path for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I do not advocate from this is it. And mm -hmm. this is the holy grail in development, and you should do Reiki, and otherwise you are a loser, first class. No, <laughs> I give them freedom. I give them freedom of choice. Yeah. Very good. And even during the during the Reiki class, even for instance, something uh, complex as okay, the Reiki energy. I don't. Most often there is a question: What is the Reiki energy? And I give them a freedom of choice. I think: Are you a physician, a physics man of physics, or a woman of physics? And you think everything in the universe is energy. Feel free. Mm -hmm. Are you are you convinced that God exists? Use that concept. Do you think that there is a universal consciousness? Use that concept. Mm -hmm. Feel free. Mm -hmm. Find your own way in it. And mm -hmm. and the only thing that I do is show you show you some ways. You can you can go that way. You can also go that way. You can also go that way. You can also depart. Mm -hmm. There's the exit. Feel free. Yeah, I, I think that's a very uh, interesting approach that um, the main thing is what is going on in people's mind, what you have activated in people's mind, how they deal with what you gave them. Uh, I think this is also um, something very individual. Uh, maybe that person A needs this kind of activation, person B that kind of activation because they have a different mindset. So um, this different mindset also shows in different culture or background, I think. Um, yes, and also in different phases of life. Yes. If you are 25 and you just have your first child mm -hmm. and you're just working on your career, you, you are in a different uh, mindset than when you're 80 and mm -hmm. looking back and perhaps preparing for the, the, the great voyage into the unknown. And mm. that makes a difference. And people may experience a Reiki class then and also differently, and also the effects of Reiki. 
Absolutely. And I think a part of your book is dedicated to what was changing in the spirituality or the spiritual yep. approach of Reiki when it migrated from the Japanese cultural background to the United States and, and then to Europe, yep. right? Well, I can give you one example. Um, um, for the course of my doctoral study, I wanted to do uh, a Reiki class given by, by a Japanese mm -hmm. person in Japanese. And uh, I ended up with uh, Tadao, Yamaguchi of Hikiden Reiki. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was, it was super. It it's was a great time. Really super. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a great time. It was, uh, our Java was also there. Mm. And it was, the translator was Ikuko, who was uh, the lady, the ah. very, very gentle lady. Yeah. So it was, a, it was absolutely a super time. So my partner and I, and a colleague, Reiki master, and her partner, we went to, um, to, to Germany. It was in in um, in München, mm -hmm. so we drove on the on the, the autobahn to to München for this Reiki one class, and at the end at the end of the Reiki one class, um, my colleague, Reiki master, noticed from hey, we haven't learned the the Reiki self treatment. Hey, oh that's so such. So she asked, what about the self treatment? And the, can we sell, can we treat ourselves? And the literal answer of Ikuko was, at that class, eh, maybe she doesn't say that always, or doesn't say that, that Arjava or Tadao would give this answer always. But at that moment, the answer was, oh, sure, you can treat yourself, but only if there's nobody else in the room. And that was a really interesting statement that she made. And that I, I, I thought about it a lot. And it made me look deeper into this, this Asian culture and Japanese culture. Why, why, what could it have been that she, that she is saying this? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, is that the collective is in Asia is more important than the individual. Sure. And uh, it is about the collective. And mm -hmm. if you notice that, uh, that's, that somebody else may disturb the harmony in the mm -hmm. collective, then mm -hmm. you should give this person Reiki and you don't even have to give them, you give them Reiki. And, um, um, and that, that is, that is a fundamental cultural thing. It's, it's a mindset. And in the West, it is first and foremost the self, because we speak of self treatment. It is even the cornerstone of Western Reiki. So that is a major uh, development from in Reiki. But it's also about self-employment, self-development, uh, self-awareness, self-this, self-that, higher self, self-self. That is very important. Well, in this, in I think that the the uh, the overlap is that it is about self-development mm -hmm. in Reiki, both in the East and in the West. But mm -hmm. the way it is expressed is that in the West, yeah. this the self the self-development is reflected in self-treatment mm -hmm. much much more than it is in japan i think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um uh, so that is that is i think a major a major change and i looked a little bit deeper into that into my research you can also find it in my book maybe you have read it mm -hmm. and I I've, I've i found an article about um uh, about educating children Mm -hmm. And I noticed that in the first years of uh, a young a, a baby and in, 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 an infant in Japan, it is it is raised in a way that it is constantly uh, dependent of others. Mm -hmm. While in the West, children are raised immediately to be as independent as possible. What do you want? What do you want to eat? What do you want to do? What do you want? Mm -hmm. Well, in, in, in Japan, you were taken by the hand into a community. Mm -hmm. And this fundamental difference, this, it's, it's now called in scholarly terms a cultural bias. Yes. And it is even so that, um, that if you put um, an, an Asian person in, an F, in a functional MRI scan and a Western person, that you will see that and, and if they will if you ask them to to think about certain things in life or in in culture mm -hmm. or in the society then you will see that their minds operate in a different way in asia than in the west so mm -hmm. you can measure it 
Wow. And so it's not all not only that that people from anthropology or from a religious studies like me notice cultural differences in spiritual practices, mm -hmm. but you can also see it in your in your mindset. Wow. And I think this is one one major things uh, of uh, yeah, differences between East and Western culture. And it also made me realize that to some extent, not exclusively, I think mm -hmm. that very Japanese Reiki styles, for mm -hmm. instance, what they what they teach uh, with the Uzui Gakkai that, that Arjava spoke about, mm -hmm. I think it is meant for Western, for Japanese people. Mm -hmm. Because it is so Japanese, and uh, often culture is something that you breathe in without mm -hmm. noticing. Yes, of course. And, uh, and for instance, you do not have to explain to a Japanese pe person what ki is, <laughs> no. or what kami is. The mm. result is that an explanation of ki was not incorporated in the teachings of Usui, because there, there was, was nothing no to need. teach. Yeah. There was no need. Yeah. And when, when that is not only the case with Reiki, but if, if something is so obvious in the one culture and it is not incorporated in the teachings, and such a spirituality migrates to another culture, mm -hmm. there is, as I call it in my book, uh, a, a, a conceptual vacuum. Yes. It has to be filled in with mm -hmm. something else. Mm -hmm. Because the concept of key is so Japanese that it, it didn't migrate with Reiki through, through Takata mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. the West. But in the West, there was the concept of uh, universal life energy. Right. That is not an Asian concept. It is a Western concept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in my book, I traced it uh, back to, yeah, you, you can go, if you go back in time, my supervisor always say, said, don't go back in time too far because you will end up with the Big Bang. <laughs> and from the from the Big Bang, everything is connected to everything. <laughs> that That's makes fine. sense. <laughs> <laughs> so it, I didn't go back to the Big Bang, but I did go, I did follow the trace back from uh, what is called in the United States in early 1900, the universal life energy, mm -hmm. and a term that Takata picked up and borrowed. Uh, and I traced it back from the United States to Europe mm -hmm. and back in time to Swedenborg. And he is, ah. he is one of the founding fathers, I think, of uh, uh, universal life energy. And mm -hmm. I started with him because at that time, it was also the time that this, um, this schism took place, this mm -hmm. uh, about uh, mind, uh, heart and mind, so to think, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this dualistic thinking, which was an, which was an error because there, you cannot uh, think without feel and you cannot feel without thinking. But yeah. in those days, it departed. And Swedenborg is one of the, also from the, one of the persons who said, well, may, maybe it's not correct. Maybe it, it's all integrated. Mm -hmm. And, and he, um, he was a, a real s a science, uh, scientist of his days and was interested in all kinds of things, including theology. And he was convinced that, that God existed and that there had to be some, some connection between the divine mm -hmm, world mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the mundane, the daily world. And, uh, and he also came to this idea of that there has to be a, an, an energy, a life energy of any kind. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that was later on picked, picked up by Mesmer, mm -hmm. who, who, uh, who, who continued with that. Mm -hmm. And um, the ideas of Mesmer... Um, were, uh, went on to, to England and to the United States. But mm -hmm. speaking about Mesmer, it's, it still is, um, you can find it in the English language. Before, for example, the word to be mesmerized exactly, yeah. comes from the person Mesmer, because what he did, it turned out to be that what he did had more to do with uh, hypnosis uh, or an altered state of mind of the, of the client rather than with the laying on of hands and energy. Mm -hmm. And that was picked up, for instance, by Freud. Freud mm -hmm. was also inspired by Mesmer, but went into the way of uh, psychology. And that was, that was later on picked on by, um, what was his successor, I forgot his name. Doesn't matter, this is another director. Jung, Jung. Jung, mm -hmm. exactly. And, uh, but for Mesmer, it, this, this whole idea of energy and healing energy came to the United States. And to a point that also that they thought, well, it is also about the mindset from how you think that has to do with it. 
and uh, and we call it an, 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 an we call it life energy and in those days there was also uh, scientists found out more about the universe how big it is and how and that is where, where that is where they added the 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 word universal mm -hmm. it it was just uh, it was just in mod those days it was modern time and then it became universal life energy so it is life energy not only in the world but it has to be in the whole universe universal life energy mm -hmm. and that resonated with in takata and takata thought oh th this is what they are talking about so she used the word universal life energy so it's not a translation from ki it is borrowed it was adopted from what was going on in the west and that was also an interesting uh, development mm -hmm. i think uh, yeah discovery is not the word but conclusion and um, if you nowadays ask random reiki masters describe for me the reiki energy they describe it in terms that belong to uh, the school of universal life energy mm -hmm. they descend from western thinking wow and uh, but if you ask it to somebody uh, from like Tadao, mm -hmm. from can you explain me to, to Reiki energy? That is rooted in key concepts, right? And those key concepts come, of course, from chi concepts. And that is also something that scholars have noticed. If you ask Japanese people to speak about key, they think they speak about key, but basically they 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 live according to chi. Because a lot of things are in, in, imported in Japan. It is, is it is world champion of of, of import. Yeah. I think. Yes. Oh yeah. And a lot of things come from China. Yeah. And what you and Arjava also already discussed is that Reiki come from Ningxi, but it's, that's another discussion where we do not have to go to. But um, but it it indicates um, um, the, the a culture is is based on history and has mm -hmm. a lot of historical steps. And I think that uh, for, for many of us, the, the concepts of universal life energy are rooted in Western thoughts more than mm -hmm. in, in uh, Asian thoughts. Mm -hmm. So what I, what I observe is that nowadays contemporary Western Reiki is, is a little bit of a hybrid. It is, it is they, it, you, you can recognize Western influences, but mm -hmm. it, is, it has an, an, an Asian layer on it, so to speak. So, so it's a kind it's of, uh, of now. A, a kind of uh, um, that there is a kind of Japanese icing on the Western Reiki cake. Japanese, Japanese <laughs> topping on the yeah something. <laughs> so it's yeah it's 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 yeah it's 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 a mix. It's a mix. Yeah. Okay. And just like just like Usui, of course, also mix things. Mm -hmm. If you and, and there's nothing wrong with it because we everybody does it. it every founder of a spirituality, it, it, spirituality doesn't fall out of the blue sky. No. It is it, a founder is inspired by something, mm -hmm. and in the case of Usui, we now know that that he was inspired by Bizan Suzuki and and borrowed his precepts and altered mm -hmm. it a little bit. And he of course he was inspired by breathing exercise and the Gracio meditation came in, and he was inspired by this buddhist uh kanjo ritual and perhaps also probably also by the shinto ritual of shinkan kishin and he founded his his reju what mm -hmm. we now call initiation so he also borrowed things and there's nothing wrong oh. with that no uh you see the wu shamans in in ancient china about uh, 2000 years before udui's time they did this going out for three or more weeks on a holy mountain of China for, for getting um, the big light and being able to do their famous healing, you know, uh, with yeah. laying of hands. And they had as face masks the, the Reiki symbol, which Uzui used. So that uh, always makes me wonder um, what else will be found if you go even deeper. But as you, as you mentioned, sometimes you end up at the Big Bang and <laughs> everything is one. <laughs> everything is one yeah <laughs> so uh, yeah. if people would know more about um let's say japanese language japanese way of writing japanese spiritual ideas and philosophies and way of life would this in your mind um help them to to support a, a proper reiki practice or maybe even is this 
the fundamental of a proper Reiki practice, or is it just something individuals could do or could not do? I think the individuals can do, uh, uh, can do, or or just leave it, because it's um, most practitioners live today mm -hmm. in their own world. Yeah, and I think that the way Reiki was uh, transmigrated from Japan to the West and in a way a little bit Westernized mm -hmm. made it suitable for for Westerners, mm -hmm. like this whole idea of self treatment. Yeah. If this self-treatment would not have become the cornerstone of Reiki, I wonder if Reiki would have become so successful yeah. as it is today. Yes. And um, uh, so it makes sense that... Uh, so, so if I think for a proper Reiki way, one does not have to, to be engaged with uh, the Japanese roots, I think, mm -hmm. because it is, it is a daily practice as it is today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what I, what, what I would like to, what I also emphasize to my students, just do it as it is. It, mm -hmm. it works because there are millions of people who have shown that it works yeah. and that we do it in the Netherlands a little bit different than perhaps even in Germany. There, there can also be already some difference uh, uh, and that it is different from Japan. So be it. For, and for instance, about culture, when these Japanese precepts came to the West, they had to be translated, obviously. And you notice that in, in the translations from Japan into English and from English into German or into Dutch, you notice already difference where you can see oh, yeah. cultural influences. For instance, one of the first German uh, uh, translations of the precepts, it, it sounded Arbeitet hart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and later on, they thought, well, maybe this is not exactly what they, what they mean. So it, it, things develop. And mm -hmm. but the, the thing is that when the precept got translated, it was it was most in a, in a new language. Mm -hmm. It was most often somebody who is who is who just learned Reiki and thought I'm going to spread this in my country in in Russian or Portuguese, and w with rather um, limited experience, translated the precepts at the best he or she could. So mm -hmm. no no blaming shaming and naming. Uh, but over time, they notice well. Maybe it's not exactly what we what we what is meant, and so mm -hmm. it changed over and over again. And it's yeah. also interesting to see. Yes, of course it is. Uh, so um, um, I'm 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 a, I'm a friend of um, science on language. You know, I I think language uh, gives us a lot of understanding of how people think, and uh, for example, that you can uh, find out about the roots of the ancient Greek civilization and their philosophy and medicine and spirituality um, just by, by knowing the different stems of words relating to the Danube civilization. Now, when, when Westerners, let's say in the United States or in, in the Netherlands, talk about simple everyday life things, they have a lot of different associations than people who have been raised in Japan have. So just by these connotations, which are usually below conscious level, we have a different idea of what that word means. And um, when, it, when it comes to that point of view, do you think that, um, let's say, knowing more about Zen philosophy or Shinto would help people to understand the roots of Uzui's Reiki better? Or is this not, not necessary? Well, they it will help to, it will help them to understand the, the roots of Reiki better, but will they benefit from it in their own practice? Yeah. That is that is yeah. the question. Yeah. Right, right. And and that is where I think well, it's not necessary because ah, Reiki Reiki mm -hmm. works as it is. Right. And but and and I add to to your question, mm -hmm. if people are interested to find out more about Shinto or 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 Buddhism. Are they also willing mm -hmm. and are they capable mm -hmm. to change certain opinions that they have? Yes. And that is another. For example, um, I heard you talk about the story that, that uh, Usui was a minister in, an, uh, in Japan uh, for Christian school. <laughs> yes. Now we know he isn't. But mm -hmm. what if you, as Reiki master, have told this story for 20 years mm -hmm. and 
that you were totally convinced that it was true. Mm -hmm. Can you handle the new information? Can you process the new information? And that is that is a challenge in itself. And uh, that is that is what is now going on also, um, for instance, in the, the Reiki Home. The Reiki Home is an organization that tries to be a, a home for all Reiki styles. Mm -hmm. And they, um, at this moment, uh, the five schoolers are discussing with a, another Reiki master, in this case, Paul Mitchell, mm -hmm. how we as schoolers bridge this, mm -hmm. this, this new, uh, new information yeah. with our own practice. I see. And for instance, in like this, in this example of uh, Usui being a, a Christian, a, a teacher at a Christian school, I don't tell that anymore. Mm -hmm. Although in the beginning, in the first uh, 10, 15 years, I did tell it because mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. was the knowledge there was. Yeah. And um, so that was it. But I, I started in 1998 in my Reiki classes from, okay, now I'm going to tell the Reiki history. And later on, I changed it from, and now I'm going to tell the Reiki story. So mm -hmm. not history, but story. Mm -hmm. And now, nowadays, I say, well, I tell you something about the legend of Reiki. Mm -hmm. And it gives more freedom. Because in, in a legend, there's everything, every country, every culture has a legend of origin. Right. Of its origin. Mm -hmm. Christianity has it, and, uh, and, uh, and we have it also. Mm -hmm. And in a legend... You, you have more freedom to tell whatever you want to tell. And if you want, to, if one wants to emphasize that Uzui was inspired by many religions and many Christianities, then that, that is the message. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you want to pass on that message in, in a, a form of legend and saying, yeah, well, it, it, he, was a, he was a teacher of a Christian school, so be it, I don't mind. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. don't tell it as historical fact. But tell it as a legend, mm -hmm. and uh, that so that you that you ensure that the 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 history story or legend whatever you tell still contains the mm -hmm. message of mm -hmm. what you want to transmit, mm -hmm. and the message mm -hmm. is of course that Uzui was a wise man, mm -hmm. he was inspired by many things, mm -hmm. and he he somehow merged it and and something beautiful came out of it, mm -hmm. what we call mm -hmm. Reiki nowadays. That's so, something uh, preserved. So that it's kind you change the the paper you wrap something in, but what is inside still stays the same. Um, yeah, although I do, I do not tell anymore that he was a teacher of a Christian school. No, but I, I do tell that he was inspired <laughs> by also Christianity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, ch I change the word, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if other people would like to tell in the form of a legend, that he was a teacher of a Christian school. Well, I don't care. For mm -hmm. me, it's that is not a dogma. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just a tutorial aid to to pass on something. Um, talking about dogmas, do you think that for a spiritual path there is a need of dogma, or is dogma or more a kind of blocking a spiritual path? Um, well, I, I, I think both. I mm. think dogma is a little bit negative. It gives the work is a negative connotation. Um, it's perhaps it's better to speak about form. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, uh, every spiritual practice benefits from a form, so mm -hmm. that you could, that the practice can take the student by the hand, and help him to develop in in whatever direction mm -hmm. but if if the if this form becomes a limitation then the students who should leave should leave the form mm -hmm. and and go and develop beyond the form and that is the point where reformations come takes place that mm -hmm. is where people break up from a, a certain form and create something new And mm -hmm. I also explain, I also uh, I like to explain that Usui, in a way, did the same. Yes. He did not stay to Tendai Buddhism, Zen mm -hmm. Buddhism, or whatever he practiced, mm -hmm. but he, he, um, he grew out of it and uh, was trained by this and by that, and, but grew out of it. So he, he, he left whatever he was doing and found it, he created his own 
path mm -hmm. and it became a new form mm -hmm. and so th this process of of being uh, led by a form until it has done what it can do for you yeah. and then you leave it behind and then you go on that mm -hmm. is a natural process and some people say you have to stick to the form but then i always say to them well look at the zooey he himself left s several forms to exactly. form his own path or hayashi or takata x they all they all do it yeah yeah and yeah. um and it still continues it's in it, zooey mm -hmm. did it hayashi did it takata did it philip firimoto did it mm -hmm. and probably her successor johannes reindel will also do it in in time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um so there's no problem and but when you when you feel that they when you feel the limitation then it can become a dogma mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and of course there are yeah that that can that can that can give friction mm -hmm. for instance what i when i when people say to me well reiki usushi grill has no dogmas and I say okay <laughs> how many how many initiations do you give during reiki one class four oh and do you feel the freedom to give three or five mm -hmm. no it's always four there you go yeah but it's the form except no if you do not feel the freedom to mm -hmm. do it in three or five or six then it is a dogma mm -hmm. exactly yeah and for instance i once spoke uh, a colleague reiki master who said um uh, who, who spoke with me and she, she said well i once had a reiki class and i felt that four initiations were not enough mm -hmm. so i gave a fifth but I don't do. I don't dare to share it. Mm -hmm. I just don't dare to share it. And that is also what I think that happens: that that people have experience and do things that they do not dare to share because yeah. they are afraid to be yeah. uh, to uh, outcast to be outcasted mm. for it. And it happens in all Reiki styles. If the, the stronger organizations are, the more problematic this becomes. And this is what I also noticed when um, uh, when, I sp when when we spoke when, when this information from this research became more public and more public known. Mm -hmm. And for instance, when it when it became clear that Takata is the person who introduced and developed the the master initiation, um, uh, at some point there was a Reiki master came to me and he said to me. I was trained by one of those Takata masters who did not receive a master initiation, and I also did not receive a master initiation. They, everybody is recognized, so that is, that is not a discussion. But this ritual, this specific ritual from that we do, and now you're, he didn't receive it. And I asked, well, how, how did you, how did it, how did it go with you? And he said, well, we were at some points just sitting at the, at the kitchen table, and she said to me, you're a Reiki master. Mm -hmm. And that was it. So it is about the moment of recognition, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this this ritual of master initiation came later on. But mm -hmm. this person said to me, "I don't dare to share this with my colleagues mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. everybody expects from me that I have a master initiation." Now mm -hmm. those kind of things, and then we can then it it gives friction. And yeah. So. Sure. Yeah, uh, that that reminds me on um, much different uh thing but but in a way i think it's comparable i once studied tachi chuan you know that thing like gymnastical martial arts thing and i studied uh, with a master who took things very seriously so he always criticized me oh you know your hand position is wrong and your hips are wrong and this and, and that and I, i i was practicing and practicing and one day when i was again together with him and he told me ah oh, you're doing wrong and i said no it can't be i'm 100 percent sure that i did exactly what you did and he said that's why he's right he i yeah. totally understand what you mean because during a class hmm. you t you t you pass on the form exactly as you have learned it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and no no variation in it but when you when you practice by yourself mm -hmm. then you should find your own way mm -hmm. it's the same i don't know how you do it but when i give a reiki class i teach them 12 positions mm -hmm. on a on the client because that is the forum but they also immediately say if mm -hmm. you give a treatment to somebody else and you that somebody has pain in his knee yeah. treat the knee and not the 12 positions mm -hmm. 
and uh, or f and follow your own intuition and mm -hmm. f follow mm -hmm. your hands and mm -hmm. call it your intuition or higher self or higher wisdom or the reiki whatever you call it but if you f desperately feel the need to place your hands there for mm -hmm. longer do it mm -hmm. exactly and, yeah but in in a reiki class i i, I strictly uh, keep myself to to the form mm -hmm. yeah just to make sure that that uh, if i hand out a, a, a certi reiki certificate that says you are trained in sushi Kriyo reiki one or reiki two that i can fully say that is what you're trained in mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that you in your own practice mm -hmm. have to stay within this dotted lines mm -hmm. of sushi Kriyo. that's mm -hmm. something else mm -hmm. and th that is the way i've tried always tried to find the balance between yeah. form and essence form f form and practice yeah that that's a very interesting point of view it's um for me when i train uh students for for becoming masters um i have the differentiation that um when when a change of practice of form just happens i think that is there's truth in it but if people want it to change and trying desperately to defend that they that they have the right to change i think it's just a still a part of the path of getting from student to master because this rebellion does not sound for me like inner peace with what what they are doing you know oh yeah 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 so um you already uh talked a little bit about that but um let's focus on this a little bit more um is your do are you aware that there is still a lot of change in the spirituality is going on uh regarding reiki in the western world or would you would you come more to a conclusion that the change is more or less done and we are just waiting for another transformation which might come or might not come in in the next years is there still something big going on in in the change of spirituality regarding reiki uh, is there something big going on so that people change their mind their approach to what spirituality means regarding reiki in the western world hmm. i don't know if there are big changes i, th mm -hmm. I think it's mm, i'm inclined to say not really big changes but that is based on the idea that um, all reiki styles have a certain fundament mm -hmm. that is always the same mm -hmm. and for this i refer to the work of liat horowitz yes the person you know you spoke you mentioned his yes name. i do he's a great scholar he is. Uh, he did a, a master thesis on um, mm -hmm. uh, d uh, Reiki initiations and mm -hmm. Japanese Reiki Reju's. Mm -hmm. And what he did is he compared a lot of initiations, the, the literal process. And um, what he found out is that uh, in all the variations of Reiki initiations, including the Reju's, so West and East. Uh, he recognized what he called an anatomy mm -hmm. of the ritual. Mm -hmm. And this anatomy is always recognizable and is always the same. Mm -hmm. Regardless if you practice Usushi Kyoho or Yikiden Reiki or whatever, mm -hmm. what style, mm -hmm. there, there, there is something fundamental mm -hmm. uh, and what is, what is in it and what always remains the same as it mm -hmm. seems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that is that is interesting that there are a few things that always remain the same. I think that mm -hmm. when you speak about Reiki, there's always an, any form of initiation, however it is performed and how many times, doesn't matter. There, there is some something, yeah. an entrance, and there's an entrance defined into Reiki. Reiki presets are always there. Mm -hmm. Reiki symbols are always in use and the laying on of hands is always practiced. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that those those elements uh together form the 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 very basic of all reiki styles that there are mm. and what you see is that it can be that it um 
can be combined with other things like tarot cards or, or angel reiki or angelic mm. reiki mm. or um, whatever you want to combine with mm. um, that is there are at this moment hundreds and hundreds of reiki styles with their own name mm. so, but there, there are some elements that are always recognizable i think i see um if we would just look at what happens during the last years like your academic studies of reiki Liard's, justin stein's uh, and Robert Furston's and so on, Doris, do you consider this maybe a kind of developing a new mindset, a new approach to spirituality of Reiki, that the group of you doing this kind of work, which is quite new, I don't see that, that anything has been done alike in the history of Reiki. Might this change our approach to spirituality of Reiki? Uh, perhaps. And, mm. and, and I have two questions. And what you said is from uh, about this, this doctoral thesis. Sometimes I ask myself, is it a coincidence that Dory Bieler, Justin Stein, uh, Hirano Naoko in Japan, and I are more or less started with doctoral study at the same time? And we're doing that parallel with each other. That we yeah. found each other, yeah. that we enriched yeah. each other, and that we yeah. could consult each other. In fact, is, is there, is there, you could, you, you, you are almost, there are people who say that's not a coincidence. That is, that is, it was time. Yes. And it was, it was initiated by the spirit or Zui or the Reiki energy or whatever you want to call something mm. transcendent. And um, apparently that's, it was time. And also that we found each other and that we still help each other. It's, it's more, of working together than of competing, a yes. competition. And I really like that. And then to your other question, does it help to, to understand the spirituality or what does it do to the spirituality? Well, two years ago, uh, I was in Gesfeld at the annual mm -hmm. Reiki, yes. uh, das, das Reiki Treffen. And they have a, a Meister Tag there, one day for Reiki Masters. And I was invited to talk about Liao's work, about what mm -hmm. he, this anatomy of Reiki initiations. Mm -hmm. And um, in the room, there were, I think, 40 Reiki masters, but all with different, uh, different Reiki styles. Mm -hmm. And um, th there for years, there, there between some Reiki masters, there was an attitude from, I do it, my Reiki is better than your Reiki, my initiation is better than your initiation. <laughs> and when I, sh when I shared this, um, this, this, the results of Liat's work and that there is an anatomy that is always there and I, I presented of course I talked about this anatomy and they all recognized it mm -hmm. and you you felt some a, a feeling of relief in the in the room of between the mm -hmm. among these 40 Reiki masters. Ah, what ah. I do is, is great what I do is fine wonderful and and I think that in 100 years from one person Usui we have now uh, are living in an age that there are hundreds of Reiki styles. So there was 100 years of divergence. And what I hope that the, the people will see that the gift of these scholars is that we can, we can come to conv conversions again. Yeah. And not in our practice, these, there will still be hundreds of forms, but that, that we realize that there is one essence and that these coolers can help to identify this, this common essence mm. that we all uh, carry in our practice. Yeah. And that it that, that will help to end the discussions. And that it is just a matter yeah. of flavor and of choice. Like, like uh, Frans Tine, he explained mm. it in nice words. He said, we all drink tea. And mm. the one likes green tea and the other likes uh, black tea and the other like jasmine tea but we all use water mm. to make tea and this water is the essence mm -hmm. and the tea is the flavor mm -hmm. and uh, but we all carry the same essence in in our uh, in, in whatever form that we we teach and practice mm -hmm. and i think that that will ease our mind that can ease help to ease our minds to mm -hmm. accept well maybe there is not one uh, uh, holy grail reiki not one uh, reiki cell that is the best 
except that it may be that one specific form is the best for you. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. something else. Yeah, of course it is, yeah. But that it is no not better or worse than a given than another reggae style. And that is that is my optimistic <laughs> view for the future, that we will all will be brothers and sisters in Reiki, ex recognizing and accepting the difference and but also be united in this oneness, this fundamental oneness. That would be a, a great development uh, and uh, i think uh, all of you all of the scholars who write about reiki right now and do the research contribute to this um when when people talk about my reiki is better than you yours is and so on i always wonder how do they measure it how do they exactly. what kinds of definition do they use and what kind of measuring instrument that they are able to to state something like that because um finally It is about um, what is your personal expectation of Reiki? So what can, are you able to make a spiritual path out of that? And that would be my next question. Is Uzui's Reiki, Uzui's heritage, for you a fully valid spiritual path or to an extent or not? Um, well, I, th I think we will never know. Because what I said before, he already he died already after four years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We will never know was it was this what he had in mind, or was he interrupted by his own death? Mm -hmm. We will never know. So, but th this is what it is, and we have to do with it. But is we it for it you? It. Is it for you a spiritual path? For me, it is spiritual path. Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. It is. Um, spiritual path in the sense that um, for me it is it has become a path of uh, a way of being okay and um, what I told you earlier that that the mirror that I had years ago from uh, my colleagues uh, who were also consultant that they noticed that I was interacting in a more relaxed way with with my environment of stress mm -hmm. and all those kind of mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. so I noticed that and that is of course that is That belongs to healing. Mm -hmm. That be, that belongs that you're they're not no longer or no, no longer but less affected by what is going on in the world, mm -hmm. and that you can that you, that you can remain you can remain in your inner position of inner inner silence, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that I'm not never heard or or that I never have said feelings, but I think that. Um, Uh, for me, this spiritual path and the path of Reiki has brought me to the point that I can now detect much in an earlier stage mm -hmm. that I'm off balance. I see, and that it that it's that it's not going to disturb me for 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 days or weeks or months, but I already mm -hmm. in a very early stage notice of oh, I'm getting worried, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. take the position of the observer. Mm -hmm. And says you're getting worried. Do something about it. And that I, <laughs> and the, what I, my experience is that the the sooner you are able to observe that you are out of balance, mm -hmm. the easier it becomes to restore balance. Oh yes, right. But mm -hmm. if if it goes on and on and on for years, mm -hmm. then then you much more work to do to restore. Yeah. Oh yeah. Awareness is so uh, is so important. Awareness. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Um, in in which way did writing your book influence your own Reiki practice and the way you are using Reiki in everyday life? Was there a change during this process? Um, the one thing that I changed uh, consciously is mm -hmm. that um, We we have my partner is also we have monthly Reiki gatherings of our Reiki students, mm -hmm. so we exchange Reiki. That's what we do. And um, what I added to this monthly exchange is 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 a, is a blessing mm -hmm. uh, uh, to 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 differentiate the word initiation and blessing. Yeah. Um, but yeah. in Japan they would say you give a Reiju. Yeah. And um, but in the West we call it a blessing because uh, people are already initiated. So 
mm -hmm. like the word living. And that is a change that I made. And I, when I, when we integrated this blessing for our students, um, first of all, they are they have the freedom of choice to mm -hmm. either receive blessing or not. Mm -hmm. So at seven thirty we start with the blessings, and at eight o'clock in the evening we start with the exchange of treatment. Mm -hmm. And if people don't want the blessing, they can come at eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. Nobody comes at eight o'clock. They all come at half past seven, half past <laughs> eight. Because they, they, they feel, they experience, especially over the years now, mm -hmm. they, they feel that a blessing has a different quality. It does something else mm -hmm. than, uh, uh, for instance, a treatment or a mental treatment. And what I found out over time is that now, uh, speaking in, in the context of holism, of body, mind, spirit, mm -hmm. and the other way around, spirit, mind, body, Mm -hmm. um, when I give somebody a blessing, it is it is it is uh, it has to do with the connection of, of how do you want how do you want to express it with with transcendence. Mm -hmm. It is as as if the spirit is orientated upwards to to transcendence yeah. reality. Yeah. And when I give this person after that uh, a mental treatment, it is as if the spirit is now oriented orientated downwards to the, mm -hmm. also to the mind mm -hmm. and so that the connection is now uh, re, uh, re, um, reaffirmed from the transcendence to the one spirit to one's mind mm -hmm. and with the reiki reiki precepts then um, that is where the, the mind actively gets involved yeah just for today don't worry just so yeah. it's not only that it is done for you mm -hmm. but you, you also have to do something yourself Right. That is, do something with the precepts, mm -hmm. and then from the, and when this this uh, um, this connection is reaffirmed again, mm -hmm. then you then it, it can can lower to to the physical part. That is where the the, mm -hmm. the spirit mind where the body comes in, and then the then the laying on of hands takes place onto the body, and mm -hmm. then I f so personally I feel um, constantly this this connection between body mind and spirit and then in fact that there is th the whole concept of body mind spirit in a way is already thinking in a dualistic way mm -hmm. uh, because i think there is only one being that there is no but nevertheless um, um I, I feel that it belongs together and for mm -hmm. me it mm -hmm. makes sense that that indeed you you give this blessing on you because it it covers this part of spirit that you offer this mental treatment because it covers a, sp a part of the, the the whole and you lay on your hands because that also covers a part of the whole and the, it, it belongs together mm -hmm. and so in time i noticed from that uh, that this reju mm -hmm. um yeah uh, was 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 not practiced anymore in this monthly gatherings i realized that this for western reiki this is a loss yes and i'm glad mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I found it again and reinstalled mm -hmm. it in the way that Japanese people, Japanese uh, styles do it. And that is that's more or less the, the a fundamental change, I think, that I made in my, in my practice as Reiki master. But for yeah. the rest, what I, what I said is that I, in, in a Reiki class, I give the form of Usui Shikriyaho. Yeah. But in my monthly gatherings, that's not the form. We 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 all we do other hand position that the people the person on the table wants. He's mm -hmm. free of choice. If you say mm -hmm. I want uh, constantly on my stomach, then he gets constantly on my stomach. Whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. But but I but I urge that they oh, I I offer them a blessing and I offer them also the mental treatment. That is most of the time ninety nine out of hundred. That's always accepted. <laughs> Great. It belongs together. Yeah. Thank you. Is it an answer to your question? Absolutely, that makes lots of sense, and I think this will inspire people to to uh, just ponder whether it may, might be something they would like to to try and enrich their Reiki gatherings. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I would hope, you know. Oh, absolutely, and mm. I think that during Reiki gatherings, I think a lot of these things are um, uh, are not mm. practiced or not offered because of the discussions that it may trigger but if you if you would 
put, like in Gersveld, if you would say to each other, okay, let's give each other a blessing. Then in no time you have a discussion, now it should be like this, it should be like that. Yes. And if you could leave, <laughs> and this, the same with the mental treatment, because then you have to use symbols and the one does, does it. And they just, people want to avoid it. So it, it is stripped yes. down to laying on of hands, which is fine, which is ac totally acceptable and understandable. Mm -hmm. But I think that if we could share this information that there is an anatomy underlying that is always the same and it doesn't matter if you perform your blessing like this or like that then you can overcome this uh, then then these these such discussions are mm -hmm. not necessary mm -hmm, mm -hmm. are obsolete makes makes a lot of sense uh, I, I remember that discussion when it was about treating the the legs and the feet you know that not being traditional it was interesting yeah well um, i i will i would love to to see that uh, many more people uh do this kind of of blessing which you which you talk about i think this will help people to um to have a different experience of the reiki gatherings a more a more rich fulfilling experience i hope so i yeah, I, yeah it, it would yeah i hope it yeah is there something you needed to learn or a change in your mindset uh, to enable you to write your book, which you found out during the process of writing that book? Um, well, if you, you write a dissertation like this, mm -hmm. you must be able to let go your own convictions. Yes, yes. That is absolutely necessary. Otherwise, you, you have a tremendous bias and then you, you go already in a way uh, uh, directed by your bias. Yes, and yes. You have to be totally independent and really step, what you call step in, step out. Step yeah. out yeah. and just, just as a schooler observe. Mm -hmm. And even have the, the, the willingness and the openness that if you would, a schooler, find out that Reiki is complete nonsense. Mm -hmm. You you have to you have to write it down if that mm -hmm. is your conclusion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you you must have this openness uh, uh, to yeah f for this willingness. And if you if you cannot overcome your own uh, convictions and d don't even think about it to to, mm -hmm. to do something like that. I see. Okay. Yeah, this kind of scientific mindset that you are a neutral observer. Yeah, you should mm. never do so, something like that to confirm your mm. own, uh, uh, especially when it concerns spirituality, mm. to confirm mm. your own convictions of a certain spirituality. Mm. Mm. That, that's, that's deadly. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> then you just uh, look into your own mind, you, you get uh, distracted with your own mind. Yeah. Uh, by the way, is there any any work, scientific work, comparable to what you did for, let's say, yoga or qigong? Uh, what do you know of? That I do not know. Okay, it would be interesting whether people have had that kind of ideas for these well-known um, paths and how that changed their world you know yeah well yeah. I th to um what makes my work a little bit unique is that it it covers the whole path from the founder yes till today yes that and, is fascinating but, but by for qigong or mm. or for uh, yoga you have to go way back and then it oh. becomes much more complicated so yeah, 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 then yeah. you you i only had to cover 100 years i but see and otherwise you have to cover 2000 years and then it becomes much more complicated might be a big big book yeah and also the part, bits and pieces are already done and it's also yeah, yeah. Uh, because yoga for instance let's take yoga because it is such an old tradition it's it uh, it's even more hard to accept uh, academic knowledge than it is for reiki because mm -hmm. in our case it's only 100 years old mm -hmm. at the most mm -hmm. And uh, or even perhaps even if you go to, to, 90, to the 1930s, it's a rather limited uh, time span that you are yes, investigating. Yes. But if you look at yoga, 
Mm -hmm. um, I think that around 10, 15 years ago, there was a dissertation um, and it, it became known that uh, uh, many of the asanas mm -hmm. that are practiced in yoga are not, do not originate from India. But oh. they originate from Sweden. No. And um, <laughs> yeah, and they and it was it was already that some schools hinted at that. And mm -hmm. but then there was a study that really looked into it, and they found that uh, a lot of those um, asanas were described only after halfway eighteen hundred, and not they're not older than that descriptions of it and uh, even if they were written in Sanskrit it doesn't matter and what they found out is that in Sweden there was in 18 uh, half 1800 there was an, a very advanced there were very advanced exercises for bodybuilders oh because they were they were uh, 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 cultivating so much muscle mm -hmm. that they were not flexible anymore and I they see. they invented uh, all kind of, of uh, exercises for mm -hmm. flexibility. Wow. And these exercises came through the, the path of trade from the West and reached India. And those yogi people thought, this is, these are exactly the exercises that we need. And they integrated it into the yoga practice. Wow. Now, that's for, for schools that is, okay, interesting, and that's it. But for Reiki, for yoga practitioners, this is for some practitioners, this was unacceptable because they had they had a reputation from that they were that they were in the line of yoga teachers that went back two thousand years, mm -hmm. and suddenly to realize that some of those asanas that they practice are not two thousand years old but uh, come from Sweden <laughs> is unacceptable. Oh yes, I can imagine. Wow, what a treat! <laughs> what a treat! And luckily for us, Reiki is not that old. It, no. it, it, we, we most of us know what our lineage is back to Usui, so we more or less can reconstruct who changed what and why and when, and it's it's still it's it's still doable. But for yoga, it is much more complex, and the 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 personal the consequences for person for practitioners maybe much bigger especially yeah. Yeah. when you when you have uh, a reputation based on of uh, or an, an authority based on a lineage of 2000 years but now suddenly seems to be 100 years instead of 2000 then you have a serious problem <laughs> I, I, so yeah, i guess <laughs> conclusion bottom line it's by many yoga practitioners it's not accepted mm -hmm. and this is an example where practitioner practice and uh, scholarship depart mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, where where schoolers accept this and uh, mm -hmm. because they have no they have no they have no problems with accepting this because they just mm -hmm. found out and they continue to to do their research on that path while practitioners stay on that path mm -hmm. and what i hope that with reiki because it's not that old that mm -hmm. that what schoolers find out can still be integrated with practice that would and be does it, that it doesn't uh, necessarily has to lead to a conflict I that's see. what I hope. That's my that's my yeah. deepest wish. That we, I think that Usui wished all of us to to find healing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I also say, if we as Reiki practitioners cannot heal our own differences, our own uh, own conflicts, then who will heal us? Yeah, yeah. Who will do the healing? Big question. Yeah, and I also say to people, if Reiki cannot is not if you cannot be healed by reiki for mm -hmm. these kind of questions stop stop practicing reiki and do something else because then it doesn't work for you <laughs> well yeah <laughs> interesting Be critical wow Julian, that was a great great talk with you thank you so much for opening up your your wisdom treasure for all of us <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, do you have your book available that you can show this is oh, it around here. you? Is it around me? Not a, oh no. Ah. Ah, one wonderful. Card. So please hold it in the camera so, so people can see this. Is it not upside down? No. 
Yeah. It's in English. It's Reiki, the transmigration of a Japanese spiritual healing practice by Yohan Yonke. And it's available in all good bookstores and in the internet. So I, I think you can get it. And it's, it's really worth reading. I, I'm constantly having it around. It's one of my really, really, really desired source books. So I think it will give you a tremendous background if you are interested in Reiki as a spiritual path. Thank you very much, Yohan. And I'm looking much forward to more talks with you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>